Hi guys, I've tried a couple of times today to start uh, this video and I had another one in mind that I've been working on for a few days and uh, that one I may put up later. But today I wanna discuss an issue that has come to my attention and I had not heard of doodle hate until a few months ago and I didn't actually believe it was a real thing, but I guess it is. There's a, factions of people in uh, out there in the world that hate golden doodles and hate people that want to own them and super hate the ones that want to breed them. So I want to address that a little bit. I hope I tried to do it today and I got a little bit wound up, so I, I'm going to try to do this again. But anyway. Uh, what the lady it was a friend of mine's one of her family members that lives in texas or somewhere was saying on her facebook page about these people that breed golden doodles and everything she put just about every 98 percent of it was flat out lies and i'll address those in a minute but what what I believe she did was I believe she copied and pasted something off of these groups because after I talked to my friend and she read me verbatim what her family member had said to her, you know, they were messaging back and forth and she was telling her that I'm not like that and she knows I have doodles and the, the girl just kept arguing with her, you know, like I kept disagreeing about this. But uh, so let me just get right into it. So I've had dogs my whole life. My first pet I got <clears throat> when I was about four. And uh, as I've grown through the years, I've learned more about taking care of them, but I've always taken good care of my pets. And, I've, and I love them and they're always family to me. And they live their whole life with me. And I'm just putting that as a background to show that I have no desire. Oh, I was gonna move my table up, but I can't move it up. I have no desire to get rich on raising puppies. So I've only had one puppy from a pair of my dogs before. That was my English Bulldogs that I had uh, years ago. They've passed away now. They lived out their lives like all of my animals do. Okay, so while I had my English Bulldogs, I've said before, a lady from my church told me about this golden doodle she had gotten from an awesome breeder that's why i decided to get them get me one years later now that one i have now and she spayed that's roxy she's she'll be four years old february the 6th and uh so last december my husband bought me two little golden doodle females little puppies and their litter mates don't do that though they're wild <laughs> they wrestle all day long every day so if you're not up to dealing with that, don't get them. Because in the wintertime, you can't let them get a lot of exercise when it's muddy. Okay, I'm getting off the subject. So this girl, what she was friend, this my friend's family member was saying, people who have golden doodles breed nothing but mutts. They are not purebred dogs. They are mixed mutts and they charge a fortune for them. And uh, they don't take care of them. And they're impossible to train and tame and they're super hyper and everything bad that you could think of to say about a dog you'd think she was talking about a pit bull okay that they said that uh she said that uh people breed doodles and they don't even bother health testing them they don't take them to the vet they just keep them pregnant and everyone 100 percent everyone that breeds Doodles are considered backyard breeders, trash breeders, or uh, puppy mill type deals. 100% of them. Now that right there told me that that woman had some kind of screw loose issue, you know, in her brain issue wise, because nobody would say 100% of people do anything like that. I don't care who it is. Okay, so when I decided to raise golden doodles, I had several reasons for it, but my number one reason was I will be retiring probably in five years. And I wanted to start a breeder business and also in that sentence, 
my goal was and has been to learn everything about breeding that I could possibly learn and everything about what makes a great breeder, what it takes to be a great breeder. And um, I knew I was gonna wait till my puppies were at least two years old to breed them. And there won't be that many litters from them. So I would then have great pets, you know, once they were spayed. Okay, so I have, there's a lot to this, but I have health, health tested my little girl puppies through Orivet. And also when I bought them, they were not AKC reg or CKC registered. You can't register a golden doodle because they are a crossbreed of a golden retriever and a poodle or a golden doodle, golden doodle, or a, a golden doodle poodle. There's like F1B, F1, F2B, all, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. That uh, is a good thing because it keeps their fur from evolving and turning into something that people don't really want. That's a whole nother subject though. But this woman said that, you know, breeders do this and they just keep a dog pregnant and they don't health test them and they don't take them to the vet and they sell them to people that don't want them and they're impossible to train and on and on and on. It sounded like a, a psycho was saying it. Now, I will speak for the lady I bought Roxy from and I will speak for the lady I bought the puppies from and then I will speak for myself. The lady I bought Roxy from is a, is a regular foster mother who's been married she lives in an awesome home, big two-story home. She buys everything for those puppies that you could ever want. Her, the mothers of the pup, Roxy's mother is a service dog right now. She was retired, spayed from breeding, and she's a service dog, but she was their house dog. And uh, people recommended her to me. So when I went to get a doodle, that's why I went to her. And also she, is able to sell her puppies while they're still in their mom's belly because she's known for having good healthy dogs there's not one thing i can say bad about roxy uh about her behavior or anything she has one poodle trait that she jumps 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 when you, i don't know why she when you're walking from the house to the garage she'll follow you on the sidewalk and she'll jump and jump and jump and jump like a poodle I'm working on that with a beep collar. I, I worked on it until she stopped doing it. Then when we got the puppy, she started it again. So we're working on that again. This girl that said, woman that said all these things about doodles said they're impossible to train. They're hyper, they're wild, they're mean. They're like, you know, she wasn't gonna be talking about a horrible mean pit bull or something like that. So that was a lie. And she said that the breeders are all backyard breeders or they are all kennel uh what do you call them puppy mills or none of them know what they're doing and all that now i'm sure there's people like that that are doing this i've seen uh, ads on craigslist like that but that's gonna happen with any breed this woman i found out breeds poodles so there you go now poodles would be inbred because when you keep breeding a purebred dog to other dogs even if you do DNA test them, you're going to end up with a dog that's related to it, to its mate. And, and you know, whatever, I'm not the dog police, but that woman should have realized that if she's been breeding poodles for years. And she said that, you know, you breed these big, great big dogs to these dogs with a little bitty body and it's hard on their bodies. Not true if you use a standard poodle. I don't know what she's talking about. I actually think she's thinking they're cutting in on her market a little. I don't really know why she would be like this with this doodle hate, but the girl that I follow on YouTube, <clears throat> YouTube called Rose and Reed Doodles, she is the one that I set my standard by and that girl is awesome. So when I started to research to become a doodle breeder, I wanted two more house dogs because two of mine had died with cancer and they had, I'd had a, over 10 years and uh, I wanted to get the two females and get started raising them because I'm not getting any younger and then the first thing I did the, the doodles were not registered and I ran into a lot of this mess when I was trying to buy a registered CKC registered 
Golden Doodle from breeders. I went and looked at several, several different places that, you know, people that sold them. Some people had a barn with their dogs in it, but they were well taken care of. And some people had them ha as house dogs. Some people were scary because they just wouldn't even let you come where they would sell them. They wanted to meet you somewhere. That's a no-no. Um, I knew how to look for a doodle, but my husband found these these two, and the reason we got two was because we couldn't make a choice between them. I picked Paris the first night. He was leaning toward Bougie, Bougie, so he just called the breeder the next day and bought Bougie too. That's how we ended up with, uh, there's a message, with uh, litter mates, with two instead of one. I was gonna buy one, wait a while and buy another one. Anyway, the woman was saying uh, that we don't health test them. Well, I personally do. I've done, well, no, I'm back on the CKC. Uh, the ones I bought were not CKC registered, but the parents were registered. And so I called the CKC and I've done a video about that. Found out what hoops I had to jump through to get them registered. And I did them. I had witnesses. I had the breeder's names, which was a woman and her next door neighbor owned the poodle. Woman was in the military, had a beautiful family, beautiful home, took care of her animals. I met the parents, you know, the animal parents and all that. Got pictures of them. Uh, but anyway, people, when I would ask them, are your dogs CKC registered? They say, well, what's the point? They're, they're golden doodles. Well, I didn't want to do that generally because then you could run into the thing of where people don't really care what they're breeding. They'll just tell you what that it, they think it's something and it's not. And I wanted the golden doodle temperament and the looks. The ones we bought them from were willing to give us their information. They're all that we needed. We had witnesses that knew we bought the dogs, that knew we owned the dogs, that knew that the vet microchipped them. We've got their vet records. We had to take numerous photos of them from numerous angles. And then I DNA tested them, which they didn't require that, but they liked it. And it showed that they were golden doodles. They were cross golden doodle poodle. And uh, both DNA tests said it. And then way in the background, they had something else. Well, every dog has something else in its, in its past because every dog, especially a purebred poodle, was created out of some kind of dogs that they put together until they got what they wanted. You know, so that that's a stupid argument there. Um, but anyway, I got my dog CKC registered that might not be that respected of a of a registration, except it's got the numbers on the registration. We have a special one crossbreed number from the DNA testing place that that anyone can reference and find our uh, health testing on our doodles. So we can't lie about it if we wanted to. So then I uh, wanted to join. Well, next I joined. Uh, I I became a uh, certified breeder. Through, through Breeder Boot Camp. I got certified through them. And that's an ongoing education for the rest of my life, but I took the nine week course and I got my certification. And that just says that I went through there. It's not, you know, anything like, you, you know, to go to graduation and dress up in a cap and gown or anything over, but I did get more education, continuing education on that. And uh, that's on my Instagram, you know, to prove that. And then uh, I wanted to register the doodles with GANA, G-A-N-A, which is Golden Noodle Association of North America, I think is what it is. But that is that, that place has a very high standard. And the DNA testing place I got to do them on the first time was on their list. It's uh, Orivet. And they had them, they had a big list of people you could use, but they, they wanted me to also do it, uh, DNA testing with Embark. So today I did those swabs. And um, so I'll get a second set of DNA testing. And again, if there's anything wrong with my dogs, I will not breed them. I will spay them. I have no problem with that. I'm making sure my dogs don't die during this process. I want them to be healthy enough to have puppies. I want to raise, to whelp quality puppies from these breeding females. Like I want people that want a doodle, a good doodle to find one. I don't want to be the people that gripe because people buy dogs and don't go to the shelter. 
because the way I feel about it, if you want a dog, then you, you have the right to have one. It's still America. If you want a certain kind of a dog, you can get it. If you don't, if you don't want to get one your own self, don't, don't judge someone else because they want one. And I love doodles and that's why I have them. And that's why I have the right to breed them. And I'm going to do the highest thing I can because another thing, I do what I do as unto the Lord. And if I told the Lord, I'm gonna mistreat these dogs and half take care of them and let their teeth rot out from malnutrition and keep them in the yard and all this stuff, you know, keep them outside. Everything that you should not do, I, I couldn't live with myself because I wanna please the Lord. So I, there's that. And also my friend didn't agree with her family member. She didn't, you know, she just was like blown away that somebody would say that. And I said, well, I've heard of doodle haters but i've never seen i've never seen it happen yet till today so I, I again i googled that kind of on google and almost what she said ver, verbatim was on some of those doodle hater sites so that's where she got her stuff from so anyway i see i i have the dna i collected today in my purse ready to mail didn't want to mail it till i go to church tomorrow so i won't lay in the mailbox all weekend okay so then if I get in Ghana, which they have to be healthy, I won't really know 100% if they're in there. I can join after the DNA testing, but I I want to do the OFSA. It's a, a it's arthritis and all this joint testing, X-ray testing. You can't do that until they're a year old. So I'll have to wait on that. They want you to do that at Ghana too, but you can still join with a minimum amount of stuff until you get done testing. And if you lie to them, they'll kick you off and you'll never get back on. And I wanna be with them because I want to uh, use their database. They check your DNA and they find you uh, a mate that's clear of any, any gene you wanna cancel out. And you can do that through breeding. If your dog carries a gene and, and it, you wanna cancel it out of the puppies, you breed it with a clear mate, and that's kind of how you work with DNA, and it's a lot to it. That's how you find out whether they shed or not, why, you know, whether they um, may have hip dysplasia, all these things. But anyway, she was saying that you can't tell if they're going to have short hair or long hair, and you can't tell if they're going to shed, and they all shed. Uh, this was what she was writing on her Facebook, and I also disagree with that. I have three doodles and none of them shed. If I brush them, they shed like a poodle. There'll be a little bit of curly hair in the brush. That's how a poodle is. That's why they mat if you don't brush them because that hair just stays in their coat and it eventually wads up if you don't brush it out. Another thing she should have known since she raises poodles, but it's misinformation she put out there. Um, I, and you know, one thing she was right about, you know, people don't brush their doodles. She said, nobody brushes their doodles and they end up in shelters and groomers won't touch them. Well, my groomer loves me, loves me and my husband to death. And we brush our doodles every day. They go to the groomer every four to six weeks. They get bathed almost every Saturday, unless I'm just too busy. Cause I've got two businesses and I work a job too, because I like to stay busy. And, uh, so she is just saying, I don't know anybody that has a doodle that they don't take care of it. I'm sure they're out there, but I don't know anybody like that. And I do know people that get their doodle uh, groomed and then they don't brush it at all until the next time they go to the groomer. That's between them and the groomer. I groom my oldest doodle, Roxy, because she does not like to go to the groomer because she got mistreated. She went one time. I never had an issue grooming her in three years. And when she went that one time, now she won't let me touch her face without fight. So what's that tell you? So in a nutshell, all these opinions these people have about they don't want you to get a registered uh, purebred dog because there's dogs in the shelters and they don't want you to get, uh, they don't want you to raise dogs because you don't have the right. I agree with that if you're not gonna do the right thing but I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing everything I can possibly humanly do to raise quality puppies. There's people out there that need service dogs. My dog, Roxy, goes to the nursing home and visits my uncle and everybody pets her. And she's fine. She bows down to the wheelchairs in the front end and she holds her like her hind end in the air. She knows to bow down to those people. And I didn't teach her that, she's just good. 
And if, if anybody has a doodle that's high strung, then they need to take it outside and give it some exercise. Throw the ball. I mean, if you don't have a big yard and you don't have time to walk your dog, you probably shouldn't get one. But that doesn't mean I've got the right to tell you you can't have it. And that's not, it does not give me the right to blame the dog because of people's shortcomings. Um, I don't know. I, I, I truly have a feeling that that girl and me would not be able to be friends or that what that woman, she's I'm sure a grown woman, uh, because I don't know. I, I don't, I just don't care for people that try to tell me how to live and they live however they want to live. She raids his poodles, has for years, she said. Why she doesn't know that her poodles are likely inbred, I don't know. And uh, she was saying how it ruins the breed, you know, because people raise these golden noodles and these designer dogs and they just try to make money on them. I don't think you can make money on them if you really take care of them because I figured it up yesterday the day before yesterday. And I've got a, a video I'm working on about that to itemize it. But I paid over $5,300 since January to raise these dogs because I've DNA tested them. They're at the vet all the time. <laughs> they had to get their wormer changed once a month because they were growing as they were on heartworm and all the other worm medications. There's a lot to it, but I hear them wrestling out. There's a lot to it, but if you uh, want to be a responsible bre breeder, that's what you have to do. And I wanted to put a little something online about that because uh, while I don't think it's everybody, I've never heard of anybody in this area saying that about golden doodles or any kind of doodle. But I do say, if you want one, make very sure that you know you have to brush them. You should brush them every day. I brush all three of mine every day. But if you can't do it, get one and brush a fourth of it every day and get a comb and comb through its hair. Make sure it doesn't get matted. And uh, if you can't do all that, just, just get some clippers and, and cut its hair yourself. Make sure you've got room to let it run and play. And, uh, you know, don't get onto them too bad because they don't forget. They're so soft-hearted. They don't forget when they've been really, really scolded and punished. They, it takes them a long time to get over it, and it can mess them up emotionally. And there's a lot of things about that. But just basically do your research and look at reputable people that are commenting online. Don't listen to these idiots sorry but on facebook that just copy and paste because that's not the type of dog they want to have i wouldn't have a pit bull but i wouldn't tell somebody else you better not ever have a pit bull because you just you don't deserve that this is not your business if you want to have a pit bull which you know i know they get a lot of bad press and i wouldn't have one but it's still america you know and uh i don't know i just wanted to say 100% I will uh, reveal the results of the uh, Embark DNA testing when it comes back. It takes about a month or six weeks, they said. Same way with the Orivet. Orivet owes me a secondary test on Paris because we had to repeat it because she struggled so bad when I was going to test her. And she don't like to have me swab in her mouth, so they're going to send me another test kit, and I'm going to do that too. But they are definitely golden doodles. They're not mutts. They're, yeah, they're crossbred, because that's what a golden doodle is. And they're healthier than a purebred. Um, Gano will open up huge possibilities for service dog, uh, the, my puppies that I that I raised, they, they can be service dogs if people check with Gano to, they, they check with them to look for quality dogs. That's what my goal is. So if you know a goat doodle, doodle hater, tell them to just keep an open mind and talk to somebody. Tell them not to get a golden doodle if they hate them. And tell them if they know anybody that wants to get one, they are high maintenance dogs. But if you love them, it's like your kids. You're gonna do what you gotta do. My video's getting too long and it's just me talking. I hope you guys listened this long. And uh, forgive me for being all over the place, but I didn't want to uh, leave that subject hanging because I am a good quality golden doodle breeder in training. And so, till the next video, I'll talk to you later. Bye.